Hello! For today's video tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to do a velvet hair scrunchie. The things you'll need are some elastic hair ties, a darning needle or an embroidery needle. It has a big eye on it. I use the ones with the bent tip, but you can use the ones with the straight. You need a pair of scissors, a crochet hook. Um, I'm using a Furls 5 millimeter. It's one of their streamlines and some velvet yarn. I got this one from Michaels. It's called Burnett Velvet. I think it's Baby Velvet. And then I've got this from Amazon and it's called Bellux. B-E-L-L-U-X. I believe that's how it is. And I made some really cool things with this yarn. I've made um, a couple of twist headbands. This is a um, knitted headband and I've made a really nice thick um, which is knit also a twisted ear warmer getting ready for the winter and then I made another I knitted another twisted headband right here and another one knit also twisted headband and here's a few of the scrunchies that I've made with it as well and um, this is my yarn bowl inspired by Lord of the Rings. My husband and I have our 3D printing business and um, we design stuff like this and make a lot of knitting and crochet accessories. And um, I'll put a link to my Etsy shop. And so if you're interested in yarn bowls or crochet hook holders or anything like that, you can always look on my shop and see it there. And that's that's my cat Gary. He's Siam she is Siamese, and yes, it's a guy's a boy's name, but she's very needy, and she's howling for somebody right now. But anyways, let's get started. This is um, this video is going to be for a beginner. It's even if you don't know how to crochet, this is a great way to get started. Um, what we do is you'll take your yarn, and you'll tie a knot onto your hair tie and if I get out of focus I'm sorry this is only like my second tutorial that I've done so trying to uh, it's gonna take me a while to get used to so bear with but anyway so you've got this tied on like this you're gonna take your crochet hook let me flop this around you want this piece always on the left or if you're left-handed then you probably want it on the right but anyway, I'm right-handed, so I'm not sure how to crochet left-handed. But um, what you do is you take your yarn, and my mom taught me how to crochet when I was eight. She told me to hold the yarn like you're holding a cigarette. Well, I don't smoke, but I've seen her holding a cigarette enough to know that this is the way she holds a cigarette, or held a cigarette. And um, this is also um, what helps with your tension. So what we're going to do is you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go through the hair tie, and you're going to grab this piece of yarn and bring it through like that. Then you're going to take this piece that's attached to your yarn, your ball of yarn or your skein of yarn, and you're going to bring it around like this, and you're going to hook it and bring it right through that loop like that. And then you're going to chain three stitches. And the way you chain three is you yarn over, you grab the yarn, and you bring it through the loop. That's one chain stitch. Grab the yarn, bring it through the loop. That's two chain stitches. Grab the yarn, bring it through the loop. That's three chain stitches. And then we're going to do a double crochet all the way around. And the way you do that is you yarn over, you go through your hair tie, bring up a piece of yarn, and then you got three loops on your hook. Now you're going to yarn over, you're going to pull through two loops, then you're going to yarn over and pull through two loops, and that's your double crochet. Now as you're crocheting, kind of um, keep this piece of yarn down so you can crochet around it and lock it in place. And we're going to continue. You're going to yarn over, 
under the hair tie, pull up the loop, you got three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do that again. Yarn over, go under, pull up, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two. And you're gonna do this all the way around. Like so. I'm gonna keep going. I'm sorry if I keep getting out of focus. This thing's a little hard to hold because it's so flimsy, but I mean, the hair tie is very wiggly, but you'll get used to it. The more scrunchies you make, the easier it's gonna be. And you're gonna keep going until you go all the way around. Oops. Oh, see what I did there? <laughs> I'm just gonna pull it like this. And then I'm just gonna keep going around. And if you're you think you've got it, you think you've crocheted enough to hold it under. Um, just cut a piece, cut that piece and then just continue doing double crochet all the way around like so. And you can use any type of crochet hook. I just prefer furls because they're very smooth. I use their knitting needles as well and I just love all of their products and their customer service is excellent. I accidentally broke a knitting needle and contacted customer service and told them that I broke one and that I needed to just order one needle because of course you get two needles when you buy them but just asked if I could just order one needle and they sent me a needle out didn't even have to pay for it that's how great they are but um, their their items are a little pricey but they are well worth it and if you break one they seem to you know help and get you a replacement out pretty quick these um, streamlines that I'm using they go for about around 20 $20, $22, I can't remember. I haven't bought these in a while, but I know it's kind of pricey because usually the basic crochet hooks are like $3, but this is totally worth the money. Okay, so when you get to this part and you're not finished, you want to have that ruffly look like these. You're going to take it and you're going to push it like this. And then you're gonna keep crocheting all the way around until you like the ruffle tightness. I like my ruffles pretty tight. So I'll keep doing this. And I crochet and knit a lot. I suffer from anxiety, so this really helps. So if you know anybody suffering from anxiety or anything, show them this video, get them to learn crochet, and I'm telling you it is like the best. It's very soothing. I usually, um, I do Ami Gurumi, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's crochet dolls. And um, I usually crochet them and hide them and at Frisco Commons Park for the children to find. And um, it's sad because with all this COVID stuff going on right now, I can't really do it because the kids have to wear masks and wearing masks in this heat is just unbearable. So I'm waiting until it's safe to where we don't have to wear masks anymore. And then I'm gonna start my doll hunts again. and. In the meantime, I'm able to make a lot more dolls, so the next doll hunt is going to be a bunch of dolls. I've actually made a couple of dolls with some of this velvet yarn, and most of the stuff in my Etsy shop, all my crochet and knitting items, um, the profits 
that I make from that go to buying yarn for the doll hunts. My husband and I just started a 3D printing business, so during this COVID crisis and wanting to start our start a new business because we all know right now if you have a job you're lucky and some people I'm just I always like looking ahead and you never know what tomorrow brings so if heaven forbid I get laid off at least for starting a little business for some income but you just never know and me, I'm such a pessimist, I always think the worst, so <laughs> I always, and that's another thing with my anxiety, I always, just because I always think the worst's gonna happen, I get prepared and think ahead and do that, but we're almost finished. Let's see. I keep on crocheting around. I keep pulling my yarn okay so we're almost at the end and I'm liking how it looks I'm sorry if I keep getting out of video but it's hard watching the screen because I have like a gooseneck thingy holding my phone <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to watch the screen and crochet at the same time so just I'm sorry if it's a little aggravating for you. Um, you can always, I think you can slow your slow the speed down on the video and and pause or you know if you need to look at it. Okay, oh, let me see. Let me see if I can cram a couple more stitches in there. Okay, all right. So we're done with that. Now these three chains that you did at the beginning, the top of the third chain right here, you're gonna take your crochet hook and you're not gonna yarn over anything. You're just gonna go right through that stitch and then you're gonna grab your yarn, pull it through that stitch and you're gonna pull it through this loop right here. It's called a slip stitch. And then you're gonna cut a yarn make sure you leave and leave enough so you can weave in your ends and I'll show you how to do that and you just pull your yarn through like so and then you're gonna pick up your embroidery needle embroidery or darning needle <laughs> and then thread it through the eye and then what I do is I um, I'll come through one of the stitches it doesn't matter which one just whatever's closest to your little thing. I'm gonna bring it through like this and then I usually I'll go down thread it through some of this. Doesn't have to be exact. We're just trying to hide this tail and then I come down here and I weave it through a few of the stitches. It's called weaving in your ends and I pull it through like this and see the stitch that we just came out of right here? I'm gonna go in the next stitch and I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna pull it and then I'm gonna do it again. I do usually do it about three or four times because it'll lock in the stitch and sometimes I'll go a little bit farther down. And then I'm gonna do it again. And you pull your needle off and then you try to cut as close as you can. And then you're all done. There's your scrunchie. So I hope you enjoy it. And if you want to go to my um, Facebook page and post some pictures of your scrunchies, I'd really love to see it. So anyway, thank you. And I hope to do some more tutorials soon.